In 2019, I joined Dow College of Biotechnology as an undergraduate at Dow University of Health Sciences. During the four years of my education, I did not only go through conventional lectures or classical laboratory experiments, but was also exposed to several aspects of research. One such research became the critical part of my final year thesis, which revolves around a small insect commonly known as the fruit flies or scientifically termed as Drosophila melanogaster. There I realized how this apparently insignificant insect changes modern day biology. Why this small fly still fascinates scientists around the world. Why Drosophila is an essential component of research infrastructure of all leading universities around the world. So in total, I would like you to witness the flight of the fly as I experienced. We are here at the Sabzi Mandi, a typical vegetable market in the 12th largest city of the world, Karachi. This market serves the distribution of vegetables and fruits that serve the nutritional demand of Karachi city with a population of over 20 million. Not only humans, but the market also serves the nutritional requirements of many other life forms, namely a 2 mm fly called Drosophila melanogaster or the fruit fly. I am Fahad Alam and I am Ikra Rizwan and we will embark upon a journey to explore how this otherwise small insignificant fly became the very reason to revolutionize the way we perceive modern day biology. Let there be molecular and developmental biology, genetics or even medical science. For this we will move from this hustling bustling vegetable market to a much more calm and structured environment of a research lab. We are here at the Dow University of Health Sciences, which is the largest public sector health university with state-of-the-art healthcare and teaching facility and with excellent research infrastructure. This is Dow College of Biotechnology, which harbors the only public sector fly research facility of Pakistan. So let's dig in. This is the Dow Fly Research Lab. But before we explore what this lab is engaged in, I think it's important that we develop an understanding of the scientific history and the reputation of Drosophila. For that, we will go towards the head of the lab, Professor Dr. Mushtaq Hussain. Professor Hussain, it's a basic understanding that research is conducted through various forms and in different techniques. But I just want it to be put simply, why Drosophila? Drosophila and humans evolved from a common ancestor around 800 million years ago. Despite such a large evolutionary distance, most of the genetic machinery, metabolic machinery and molecular machinery is still conserved between the Drosophila and humans. Around 60% of the Drosophila genome is actually homologous to the human genome. 75% of the genes which are being associated with human diseases are present in the form of an orthologue or homologue in the Drosophila. That makes Drosophila a very suitable model that is genetically similar to the humans. This is fantastic. But considering that mice and chimpanzee are evolutionarily more closely related to humans and by extension making them more genetically similar to us, I was just wondering, what unique advantage does Drosophila have over these model organisms? You're absolutely right, Akra. Mice and chimpanzee are evolutionarily much closer to the human and by the same token they are genetically more similar to the human. But using any vertebrate as a model organism has ethical concerns, which in the case of Drosophila are not there, being an invertebrate. Secondly, Drosophila provide a selective advantage over other vertebrate organisms if you want to observe a heritable effect of any drug, any chemical, any biological treatment or any physical treatment, precisely because it produce, reproduce in a much faster rate and produce large number of the progeny. 
The third biggest advantage with the Drosophila whole is the, is the size of the animal. And as they say, seeing is believing. So let's move to the lab. So confidence over the results hold profound importance in the field of science. To ensure the certainty over the results or to bring the confidence on the results, scientists often run replicates. It means running the experiment either multiple times or running the experiment in multiple subjects. A drug which has been tested on 10 mice will produce less reliable results if the same drug being tested on about 50 mice. So if you can see this cage, it has 10 mice and it is adequate space for the carrying 10 mice. You can't place more number of mice in that cage, scientifically speaking. Consider if you want to run an experiment on 50 mice, certainly you will require 5 such cages. Compared to that, if you want to place 50 flies, you require that small wire. Wow, they're so much smaller than mice. Exactly. And that gives Drosophila a selective advantage over the mice to be used as an animal model. Now that we understand the profound importance of Drosophila in life sciences, let's explore the research investigations underway at Fly Research Facility and Tau College of Biotechnology. And who better to explain this than Anusha Amanullah, the senior most researcher at this lab. We know that Drosophila is used to study heritable characteristics. How does your research expand upon that element? Well, Ikra, you know, cousin marriages lead to several different forms of congenital, anatomical, physiological and behavioural errors in the newborn. And since this type of marriages are pretty common in Pakistan, so does these errors are. And my research actually simulates consensuous marriages in flies. And what I have found that it increases the sterility and abortions. Also, I have noticed that several different forms of anatomical errors in the flies which resembled very much to the human disease condition. For example, here you can see a fly with a whole brain. And due to inbreeding, a fly was developed with a partially developed brain, resembling the human disease condition of encephaly. And in fact, out of 49 candidate genes are responsible for encephaly, the orthologs for 29 were found in Drosophila melanogaster. But in order to conduct research on flies, one of the most important thing is to have flies or so-called lines of flies. In order to know how different types of flies are produced, reared and characterized, let's ask Aisha whose work revolves around the development of different lines of Drosophila melanogaster. So basically what I'm doing is developing different lines of Drosophila melanogaster and I'm doing so by using different strategies, either directly bre breeding the flies or exposing them to different chemicals. So the fly lines that I have developed, they differ from each other in various aspects, including their behavior, their physiology and their anatomy. And since these traits, they are, they are underpinned by genetics, so given the genomic similarity between Drosophila and humans, these lines could potentially be used as human disease models or could further be used to design several experiments and screen different sort of the drugs. Here you can see for yourself the fly eye variations that we have developed here in our fly lab. Now that's remarkable. Flies can be used to test for the efficacy of drugs. As preclinical trial models, they are continuously used for drug screening and for testing potential side effects. That's true. During my thesis, I myself assess the activity of various thrombotic agents. And at present, different oral contraceptives are being assessed at Flylab. To learn more about this avenue, let's discuss with Sukena. The drugs developed by these pharmaceutical companies target human disease genes. And interestingly, 75% of these genes are homologs in Drosophila. Making Drosophila an effective model for screening the pharmacological properties of different drugs. At present, in our lab, we are screening anti-thrombotic agents, anti-cancer agents, and even oral contraceptives. What we have observed is that methotrexate, which is an anti-cancer agent, it accelerates the transformation of larvae into pupa, and whereas oral contraceptives generally delay the process. Well, that was very interesting and educational. Hmm. Now let's expand our horizon and to further explore what else we can learn about Drosophila melanogaster. For this, we will move towards the largest university of Pakistan, University of Karachi.
Professor Maksud, we all know that genetics is considered as the forefront of life sciences and on the other hand Drosophila melanogaster is also said to be the queen of genetics. Now I wonder that what do you think that without Drosophila melanogaster where would we be standing in the field of genetics? Drosophila is uh, one of the most important model organism and many of the studies have been done on Drosophila. Uh, the importance of Drosophila cannot be denied and uh, the reason for this is because of its uh, short lifespan, easy to handle, few number of chromosomes etc. Many of the uh, human gene orthologs have been found in Drosophila and it is said that it more than it is about more than 65 percent. Uh, Scientists have uh, developed various mutations in Drosophila to study the human diseases. Uh, one of the most important one which I think is the familial hypertrophic cardiomyopathy which is uh, also known as sudden death syndrome which is uh, uh, common in athletes in which the heart muscles get ruptured because of the weakness of because of the mutations and the weakness. So uh, many other diseases have also been studied and uh, I think in future many more are going to be studied on Drosophila uh, and I think uh, Drosophila will be the most important model organism in the future although there are many others that are there but still uh, Drosophila I think is on the top. Therapeutic inventions which were once present in the form of crude plant extracts have now been transformed into concentrated bioactive compounds called drugs. In modern genetic treatments, entire genes from faulty genomes are deleted. Drosophila melanogaster is also used for this purpose. To learn more about this aspect, we connected with Dr. Tariq from Lums Lahore. Dr. Tariq, you are the pioneer of Drosophila research in Pakistan. How would you describe your experience? Thank you, Ikra. Thank you for having me here. Uh, yeah, I came back in 2009. Uh, from Switzerland. So coming back to Pakistan, the big challenge was, should I go for Arabidopsis or should I establish Drosophila? And I gave a challenge to myself that, you know, I should focus on developing Drosophila as a model system in Pakistan. So now when I look back, it's more like a dream. Uh, in last 14 years, uh, our lab has, I think, 36 undergrad students who have done uh, senior projects, uh, one year long research in their final year. Uh, we had uh, nearly 20 MS theses and uh, five PhDs are graduated. That's fascinating. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Dr. Tarek, your journey is really very inspiring and an example to all the future scientists that are yet to come. Now, I have a question for you. Science nowadays is moving towards the genetic intervention of diseases. How do you think Drosophila melanogaster goes with this context? Thank you. Thank you, Fahad, for a wonderful question. Um, initially, people realized after, uh, you know, all the discoveries in developmental biology and the way uh, fruit fly has been used as a system of research in which almost every part of the fruit fly has been uh, dissected uh, in terms of genes and the pathway. Uh, more and more what we are realizing that fruit fly is being used as an excellent model system for diseases. Besides the chromosomal theory of inheritance, uh, in, uh, uh, a huge piece of work related to genetics of development uh, is all done in flies. And we owe a lot to fruit fly, this tiny monster. Our long-term goal is that uh, we should be able to discover cell signaling pathways linked to uh, gene regulation, cell fate specific gene regulation, and you know, those cell signaling pathways will be used as a trigger uh, and will help us change cell fates. You can think of them in, in the context of 
uh, stem cells. You can think of them in terms of regenerative medicine, whatever. It's unfortunate we don't have funding in Pakistan. It's extremely unfortunate uh, that, you know, due to shortage of funds in this country and the financial crunch and lack of focus on science in Pakistan, um, we are not able to achieve what we could have achieved. Thank you so much, sir. Your contribution is very, very significant to the world of science. And uh, that was very informative on your part. And I thank you so much for your precious time. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me there. It is incredible to witness that such a small fly can be attributed to so many revolutionary discoveries. That is why it is not surprising that all leading universities around the world have a dedicated fly lab facility and that includes even NASA. Even six Nobel Prizes have been awarded to scientists who have used Drosophila melanogaster as their animal model. With efforts going on at Dow University of Health Sciences and elsewhere, I am sure that many more await in future. And as Carl Sagan says, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known.